Now at this point we have our brand new plugin installed and we've got this pop-up. You might have already dismissed it, that's okay, but this pops up that it talks about extensions. Ever wanted to be able to find an extension for your WP e-commerce store and purchase? Install and activate it right from WordPress, now you can. Find the latest and greatest free and premium plugins for WP e-commerce in our extensions marketplace. So the um, this plugin has sort of plugins for it also, extensions. If you already closed this, that's fine, but I'm going to click on the extensions marketplace just so that I can take a quick look at it. And this is what I'm saying about that there are extra features that maybe you wish that your site, <clears throat> that your shopping cart could do. And if it doesn't, then uh, there should be an extension for it. The place that you also find this, if you closed it, is under Products Extensions. So Products is a brand new screen we've got, which I'll mention in a moment, but Extensions. So this is its own sort of uh, plug-in marketplace for this plug-in. And we'll see here the gold card. Well, what, what do I get for $99? You look in there. Gold card for developers, members and subscriptions, Stripe payment, FedEx. So all of the stuff that most people won't need, such as the BB Press spam killer. I don't even have BB Press, so obviously you don't need it. I'm never going to use USA ePay. I'm going to use PayPal, so I don't need that. MP3 download manager. This is a more powerful one than the one that's built in. But there is a built-in MP3 or ebook system, but if you need more power to it, if you view the details, you might see that's useful for you. Um, I still don't know how to pronounce it, but this is another big one, the Mihi, Mihi Ray, Mi, Miji Ray um, payments. That's a popular one that's also coming out for uh, doing accepting payments. Again, we'll use PayPal. We'll be fine with it. Zero, that's a one I've been hearing about. This one is for sort of like a competitor to QuickBooks, but it's all online. This will have integration with it. So lots of extra features. And WooCommerce is the same way, but honestly, I feel a lot of the basic functionality to really get started with WooCommerce, you usually have to invest in. Out of the box, we'll be able to do a lot with this plugin. Maybe not everything you want, so there's an extension for it. And maybe even after looking at all of these extensions, it still doesn't do what you want. No problem. Uninstall WP Commerce, go install WooCommerce. But we'll we'll come back to the screen a little bit later. On my instructions here, number six, you now have you now have new menu items. We'll look at each of these. In the dashboard. We've got store upgrades and store sales. Notice under dashboard, we have two new items. Store upgrades, which is very similar to the screen we're looking at, so I'll skip it. And store sales. Click on store sales. It's under the dashboard. And now this is keep, it's going to keep bothering me about the extensions, and I'll dismiss it. But under the store sales, this is one of the important screens to look at. What have I sold? How much? Who do I need to ship to? This is being returned. Print a shipping label. All of that important stuff will be found here under store sales. There's nothing to look at yet, but this is where I would show order numbers, customer, the status, when this was placed, etc. And I could download this as a plain old Excel file. If I need this to be integrated with Quicken, uh, not Quicken, uh, QuickBooks, um, there's an extension for that. There's also that extension to connect with Xero. You might want to look into Xero since it's a, a newer generation, newer than, uh, than QuickBooks. That's up and coming and I've heard good things about it. Personally, our company has not used it so I can't fully vouch for it, but I read a lot of tech blogs and listen to tech podcasts and zero is up and coming. X-E-R-O. It's listed right there. Anyway, so under this screen uh, is where you'll see your sales and such. And again, now that you're going to become the next Amazon, you're going to need to deal with this. You will get emails that say new sale, and you'll get the details in an email. 
but this is where you'll see the the person's shipping address and all of that stuff because then now you're going to need to take that item and then wrap it up and put it in a box and ship it to a physical location if you're doing physical items and that information will be right there in the customer info that also then gets us to another issue do you notice when you visit Amazon or eBay or just about every company nowadays and then especially when you're in the in the in the cart uh, or in the buy now part you're going to see that little lock up on the web browser let me just show you here I'm going to add to cart check out look at that that lock all the web browsers nowadays show some form of lock especially when there's some sort of security necessary like on your bank shopping with your credit card and all of that that lock is not just an icon that Amazon activated that lock is known as SSL an SSL <coughs> certificate <clears throat> it is an add-on that you pay for you don't pay WP Commerce you don't pay WordPress you pay your provider you pay Bluehost or GoDaddy or Yahoo or whoever you're purchasing your website at you buy it at the provider of your website and it ranges between about eighty to ninety dollars a year and what that is is vouching for your site adding security to your site that you are the legitimate website of a particular company that your website has encryption and all of that have you ever tried to click on the lock this is a secure connection with Amazon. It has, it's been verified with VeriSign, one of the big important companies of the internet. It has a 128-bit <coughs> encryption. 256 is better, but more expensive. Uh, and so it's got encryption, it's protected, your connection is, is more secure. I bring that up. Uh, maybe it's too expensive for them. Um, the I bring this up because you're going to be now collecting personal information. You're going to have people's addresses and phone numbers and such. And if you have that little lock up there, people will be more confident in buying. You don't get that lock automatically. You have to pay for it. It's a yearly thing. If you buy uh, your service from GoDaddy, for example, all the companies have some deals. I've seen a deal at GoDaddy, free SSL certificate for the first year, so I'm saving $90. Uh, Bluehost might have the same thing. You have to look it up. They're always changing their deals because all of these providers are in uh, competition with each other. They want to give you the best solution for the best price, so shop around. Is that the same as VeriSign? As the VeriSign used to be? Yes, pretty much. VeriSign is one of the big ones. Uh, Thwat is another one, or Thwate, however you pronounce it. They're another big one. You don't really need to deal with them. You just deal with your provider, and they deal with the original certification issuers. And that is confirming that you are your identity, you are the legitimate owner, and activates the security. Now, the good news is you don't need this in to some degree because your site will not store your store will not save your clients credit card information it will only save their home address and phone number and whatever you ask of them that sort of personal information to ship them the product or whatever if you're doing goods and services you know, digital products, you don't need their home address, you don't need any of that stuff, and you don't have to collect it. But you'll need their email, most likely. So you're going to be building a database of personal information. And you've probably heard about all of the hacks that happen all the time. It happened to Target. It happened to Home Depot. It happened to the big government uh, agency, the OPML, or whatever they are. It happened to them. 20 million social security numbers stolen. So, I'm not saying it's going to happen to you. Uh, the bigger target you are, the bigger you are, the bigger target you are. 
Um, so that SSL helps you in that regard. Other aspects of security also help, but SSL is a big step toward that. The other big step is we will never be processing that credit card information. PayPal will. And PayPal has a lock. At a certain point, our transaction, the user's transaction, will be handed off to PayPal. A user will go to the PayPal secure servers. They'll get the lock and they will be protected via PayPal. So in a sense, you don't need to buy the SSL certificate because the security will be taken care of at the time of payment via PayPal. But still, you're going to be storing customer information. So we'll talk more about cybersecurity as time goes on. But that's something to make a note of. You might want to invest in an SSL certificate as time goes on. Unfortunately, it's not just a matter of buying it and you get the lock automatically. You have to do some setup. And that's what the good people at uh, GoDaddy Tech Support are for. Bluehost Tech Support. They'll tell you. You bought the certificate, here's what you need to do in your cPanel in Bluehost. That's what they're there for. They're open 24 hours a day. They'll help you set it up. Uh, we'll look at enough of this, but we won't. I won't be able to show you the specifics of the SSL setup. The providers will, will give you that information over the phone, step by step. They'll walk you through it. That's one of the screens, the store sales. Any questions before we move on? The second item we'll look at is we've got products. We've got a whole new products menu item that we didn't have before. Plugins may add items to the, um, to the menu in a variety of places. And one of them is products. If you hover over products, we'll look at the screen in detail, of course. We have no products, so we won't see much here. We've got products, a list of all our products. We can add a new product. We can deal with categories and tags, very important. We'll work with that. Variations. Some of you might need variations. Let's say I'm selling a t-shirt. Well, I might be selling a men's version and a women's version. Okay, and then deeper, I might be selling a large men's version, medium men's version, small men's version. Those are variations. Texcoco, that restaurant, had tortilla soup, 10 ounce, 20 ounce variations. Over at Elsa's site, there were no variations there. It's just, there were variations, but she's handling in a different way. You know, ring sizes are different, of course, but it's being handled via... Um, an input box that says, you know, input your ring size. It's not a drop-down list because, you know, there's 40 sizes. Over at Swap Dots, they have also variations there. Small wristband, large wristband, but not every product has a variation. The buttons, for example, don't. They're all one inch. So that would be when you're doing a variation, if you need a women's, men's, what sizes, color? It's a little bit more about color because categories would be men's and women's and kids but then variations would be under kids we've got large medium or small or under kids we've got red yellow blue but categories would be that larger organizational unit okay. we'll look at that once we actually make some products everyone loves coupons and you have the ability to do coupons here we'll see you know five dollars off ten percent off etc expiration dates and all of that. We'll look at that later, and that's all under products. We've also got, if you hover over, if you, if you go to pages, let's back up here, right above here, click on pages. Remember, we have a home page, we created an about page, and so forth. Now if you go to all pages, we've got products page and child pages. Checkout page, transaction, results, and your account. These can be renamed of course because transaction results sounds very mechanical. It could be renamed to, you know, thank you because these are the results of the transaction. We, uh, a person could have their own account you know, you go to Amazon and you don't log in, every, you don't create an account, account every time. You maybe created an account a year ago, you just log in. 
you can do that for your for your site as well. That of course then gets you into the issues about now you have to deal with user management. And it's relatively easy. WordPress has it built in that people can create accounts. They forgot their password. WordPress has a built-in password retrieval and so forth. Um, but then now you're dealing with more personal information from users. If you don't want that, you don't have to have accounts. It's pretty easy for a person to, to check out without an account. If you want to make it easier, you can create accounts. You can have users create accounts. We'll look at what these pages look like soon, but we've got these new four pages that handle the, mo the main four aspects of the site. And as we'll see later, if you've got 20 products, the default is all 20 will show up on one page, products page. Number one, I don't like that name. I don't want my bakery to be selling products. I want it to be, I want it to, to be selling baked goods. I want a better name. We can change that. Secondly, I want to have sections for cakes, sections for cookies, a section for um, cupcakes. I don't want them all thrown on one page. Amazon's not like that. It's under sections. We'll be able to do that as well. Then the next item, the one we'll spend a lot of time, uh, mostly today, I think, is under, if you hover under settings, we have store. Click on settings and then store. This gives us then a screen full of tabs with many things we have to deal with, which we'll talk about in this class, of course. Screen by screen. Now, there's all the stuff we have to deal with as a store administrator. Um, if we're selling on Etsy, we don't have to deal as much with as much, perhaps. Here we have to deal with everything because now we are in charge of the whole store. So the downside of being your own store is you have to deal with all of this now. Setting up the plugin, updating the plugin, adding your products, updating your price, updating tax, setting up admin accounts and taxes and shipping. A lot of downsides. The big upside though that might surpass everything is you keep more of the money because now you're in charge of it all. You set how much you're going to ship for. You set how much you're going to charge on top of taxes to recuperate what you're going to be paying Uncle Sam. So you'll be getting more money out of it, potentially. Okay, so on these sheets, I've got very, very, very basic one-line things that we'll get into detail. Um, we're going to spend some time on the boring stuff first, the, the store settings. Then we're going to start adding products, dealing with that, and moving, moving forward. So um, we've got a site ready to go. We've got an e-commerce site. Uh, if we visit if we visit site though, I have nowhere, I don't see anywhere where's the shop? There's no shop. That's because last month we designed a menu and we did not have a shop last month. Therefore we don't have a menu item for the shop. Um, we're going we're gonna to add a shop menu item so that at least we can have those screens and then we'll start to uh, set up the settings and then proceed. So it was last, it was a whole two weeks ago or, or more and you might be new but does anyone remember how do we add a new item to this menu? Well step one we need to go back to the dashboard to the dashboard. Under appearance, hover over appearance, we'll see menus. And it's plural because we can have more than one menu. So go to menus. Think about this. You may be having your regular shopping, your regular shop, and then during uh, Christmas you have a brand new uh, 
uh, menu structure to highlight your Christmas stuff. So you can have multiple menus. And we did look at that a bit last time. We have a main menu and a social media menu. We could set up a menu, you know, a Christmas shopping menu, a Valentine's shopping menu, and have different menu items. That's the cool thing about, uh, about WordPress. But in our case right now, our main menu shows that we have a home, about us, our blog, and social, but nothing about the shop. So what's the next step? How do I add the shopping cart stuff to my menu? I think I heard someone say, click on products, and your account, and your transactions, and your checkout, and click add to menu. These items are not on the menu yet. The site menu. So select them from the left and click Add Menu, Add to Menu. They all get added to the menu down here. Notice they are all at the same level of indention, which means they're all top-level items. I want drop-down items, which is what I have here under my social. I've got the Facebook and the Twitter indented, so they're drop-down items from my social. I want these indented as well. You might recall, just drag them to indent them. Be careful because you could also drag them so that now there are submenus of submenus of submenus. Checkout is a submenu of transaction, and transaction is a submenu of account, and that's a submenu of product. Be careful. I'm just saying. So drag them so that they are on the proper level. Sometimes it's finicky, you have to move it around and it'll snap into place. And now we've added products page, I don't like that name, we'll edit that later. We've added the, these items and we have to remember to save the menu. You can rearrange these however you want, maybe you want checkout first, whatever, but remember to save your menu at the top right. And now visit site. Visit site. And now on this particular theme, our menu is on the left. There's the products page. Drop down arrow. We click it, the arrow, and we've got the other sections. Click on products page. products page. There's no products. Okay, we'll add products later. If you go over to checkout, there's nothing in your cart. Visit our shop. Your account. No, there's nothing to show yet. Nothing's been done. And then finally, transaction results. Nothing has been transacted. These will automatically fill themselves in as we add the products and the payment method and all that cool stuff, and we can edit it to some degree. Question? So, like on checkout, there's not proper punctuation, there's, a, there's nothing in your card to read it, please visit our shop, it's all over like piece. It's kind of run together, isn't it? Is there, is there anything you can do about that? On that particular little item, no. Uh, if you wanted to edit this, to change it, with the things about WordPress, there's basically two ways. If the developers gave you a method somewhere in the plugin or theme or whatever to change it, then you change it. If they didn't give you a way for that, there's always a way to change it, oftentimes by changing a little bit of code. So I'll mention also how to edit the code. That might be too complicated for most people, um, but there's always a way to fully customize everything in WordPress, even if the developers didn't give you a button to do it. It just requires for you to pull back the curtain, edit a little code, and you've customized it. Is it HTML? It's HTML, pretty much. Sometimes there's CSS, sometimes there's JavaScript, usually HTML. All right, so those are the um, those are the main pages. Uh, to customize the design and such, we'll see what we can do in the back end in a moment. And again, some things 
um, we will need to edit via HTML code. Let's go back to the dashboard. Let's go back to settings, store. We had pages of our shop, but they weren't visible because our menu didn't display them. Now it does. Now let's go through these screens here. So the very first section here, general store settings, base country region, select your primary business location. Probably want to se select USA. So click on there and scroll down to USA, or if you don't know this trick, Usually you can click on a drop down and start typing a letter of where you want to go. So if you start typing, if you click on that and then type U, it'll take you to the U's and you'll see all the U countries instead of scrolling all the way down. So select USA. This is under settings, store, and general. base country USA and then it asks for a state so like California unless you've gone as far as incorporating your business and you've gotten all that stuff in your uh, Delaware limited liability company and all of that now some of this stuff I can give you suggestions but some of these settings you have to consult your accountant or your lawyer um, because now you're going to be running a business. You don't have to officially get a business license or a merchant account, a business account, business savings account and such. You don't have to really do any of that. The more of that that you do to create more of a legitimate business, the better for tax purposes and all of that. So I'll be suggesting things here and there, but you don't need that stuff. For example, a business license. You can get one and it lasts for five years. I think it was about $35. And I have a legitimate business under my name. Uh, I have my own employee identification number via the IRS and all of that. And that came with the business license. So if you want to go that far because you can have employees, are you the only one that's going to take your product from the garage and send it to the UPS? Or are you going to have uh, your spouse? Well, if your spouse is doing it, is your spouse an employee or a contractor? There's all of these issues that you might not have thought of before that you might not want to think about, but you need to because you're running a business now. For example, where are we shipping to? It'd be nice to ship all over the world like Amazon, but am I going to pay the $40 uh, shipping that I need to send to Albania? Maybe if you build that price into the sale price of the product. For the moment, we'll say we'll only ship to the US. So the way I would do this is click select none and then scroll down and activate US. Now, when it says the minor app. Would that be the Hawaii, Virgin Islands? Hawaii wouldn't count there. Uh, perhaps minor, perhaps Virgin Islands might count, and Guam and so forth. But Hawaii is not counted as one of these minor, minor outlying ones. Have you ever gone to a store, an online store like Amazon? You're going to buy something really nice and expensive, and you're about to buy it, but then you think, maybe I should pay the mortgage instead. So you don't, so then you don't buy it, paycheck rolls around, you come back to buy it and it's still in your cart. That's what this is here. Keep start, keep stock in cart for how long? The default is one day, so set the amount of time in a customer's cart is reserved. You can also specify decimal values. Um, so we'll say this item will stay in a person's cart for one day or week or hour. So if you want even fractions, one and a half weeks. And then it goes back into the pool. If you have it that long and you've got limited stock on hand and a person is wishy-washy and they don't buy it and someone else wanted to buy it but the item sold out. 
because they added it to the cart and it's held in their cart for one and a half weeks. So it's up to you to decide how long you want to do this. How long would you like to keep the stock in the person's cart? I'm going to leave it on default. You have to decide how long. I can't tell you what's right or wrong. Hierarchical product URL. Don't worry about this. It's technical but not necessary. The permalinks that we set up under tools, uh, under settings permalinks, is handles what we need. So don't worry about that. Currency. Yes, we're dealing with dollars, but not New Zealand dollars. You might want to set that to USA dollars. You can change the way the dollar, the currency symbol appears. This is the default that we usually see in the US. You might see it in other ways. Notice right here, space, no space, doesn't matter at all. But if you're shipping to particularly, like let's say Europe, where their monetary currency sign is at the end, here's where you can set that. If you're going to be weird and change your separators here, like other countries, you can do that. But I say a comma is for that and a period is for that. Any changes that you make, then you want to save. Any questions on this screen? Let's uh, go to the admin screen, another important screen. Each of these is more important than the other. Max downloads per file. This is more for people that are selling virtual products. Are you selling an ebook, an MP3, a PDF? Are you selling virtual products? And here it says maximum downloads per file. How many times can a person download that song? I think one is really restrictive. Maybe they accidentally deleted it or their hard drive crashed and now they'd have to buy the song again. That's going to annoy people. I would say a 3 max download, but this is probably moot for most people. Most people are not going to sell a digital product, so you don't even have to change this. But I'm saying that if you're selling a digital product, three chances to download it is good. If they need a fourth copy of it, they can pay. If you think that's too restrictive, then put 99 doesn't matter. What's way too restrictive that I would not recommend for anyone if you're selling a virtual product is lock downloads to IP address. If you went to your friend's house and used their computer and they bought, if a user went to their friend's house to buy your product and then they deleted it or whatever and then they go home and they try to download it from their computer, they will not be able to, even if you give them 99 downloads, if you activate lock IP. That's their internet address. Your friend's house has a different internet address than your house. So if you lock this to IP address, wherever they downloaded that file can only be downloaded again at that location. I would not turn that one on. And this is also a moot point because you probably will not always have your the same internet address. Cox is going to change your address once in a while. AT&T is going to change your address once in a while. So even if you keep it on yes and have people expecting them to download it from their own home, Cox is probably going to change that address next year. Or AT&T is going to change it next week. You don't know. And again, this only matters for those that are downloading your products. Don't worry about MIME types, it's already set properly. Store admin. It's set to this fake email address, but if this were your real store online, this would be the email that you would get notifications at when someone buys a product, when someone wants to return a product, when your stock is low. So you want to set that properly. You don't need to hear because it's not a real, real store. The TNC, Terms and Conditions, if you have a product that has a choking hazard, that has no returns, that has, you know, each of these products is unique, photo may not apply, that sort of thing, you can put it in your Terms and Conditions. If you put anything here, 
the person will not be able to buy the product until they click on, I have read the terms and conditions. That way you have that legal protection. What to write in here? It's up to you. Consult your lawyer. But you can always go to do a search. You know, just go online and do a search and, and look up e-commerce terms and conditions template sample boilerplate you know I'm gonna look up e-commerce terms and conditions template and there'll be 14 million results you look in here and you decide which is the best one for your particular product write one yourself get your legal friends to help you with it but if you don't want to do that, you can always search for e-commerce terms and conditions template or sample boilerplate and you'll find something. You don't have to put anything here, but I'm going to write. Or this is Victor's Bakery. We're selling baked goods. No returns. Some items how does that saying go on some of those items? It says uh, product or goods may be um, produced in a facility that also handles nuts and is it just nuts? Nuts and allergy and other allergens, other food allergens. All right, so you're, I'm shipping my cupcakes throughout the U.S. Oops, you have a peanut allergy. You're going to sue me? No, you you clicked on the, uh, the terms and conditions, so uh, you have more protection. Someone could still, of course, sue you, but then that's when the lawyers go at it. At, the, at this point here, you've got some protection at least. Customer purchase receipt. When someone buys something, they will get an email. And here you can set, where is this email coming from? and who is the name on that email and what does the email say. You oftentimes see something like no reply at Amazon.com or Victor'sBakery.com. This is not creating an email address. This is using an email address. So if you don't have no reply at MyShop.com, this doesn't really work. But technically, if you're, if you're doing a no-reply email, you're expecting no reply. So you could put a completely fake email here. And if someone tries to reply, it won't work. You could create a real email address called no reply. You have to create that at your GoDaddy or Bluehost or whatever, or Gmail. All right? You can say vicspeak at gmail.com. You could have already an existing Gmail and put it here. Um, because sometimes people might reply, even if it's no reply. It is a good, a good idea to fill that in, or else it'll look like a fake email. Where is this coming from? This is Victor's Bakery, or whatever your company is. I'm going to call it Victor's Bakery Shop. And the specific email that will be sent to them will say, thank you for purchasing with, and then that will automatically get replaced with your shop. Any items to be shipped will be processed as soon as possible. Any items that can be downloaded can be downloaded using the links on this page. All prices and blah, blah, blah. You can change this. It might not quite apply to what you need. Again, I'm using this fake site, Victor's Bakery. So there are no downloaded cupcakes that I'm selling. So I'm going to remove that part. Any items to be downloaded will be listed here. I don't need that. All prices include tax and postage and packaging where applicable. Your order these items. And then a simple little table will appear that shows them um, the product list, total shipping, total price. We can also display tags up here. Purchase ID, shop name, product list, total price, total shipping, a quick question, how did you find us? That way people can answer how they found your store. And a total tax.
Let me just change a little bit there. You can change that how you want on your real store. This works fine for mine. If you're shipping these products, you probably want uh, that shipping number and such to get sent to your user. So this is what the user will get. Product tracking email, which I think sounds too mechanical. So you can have shipping info. Anything you want. And then the email will say this. Track and trace means you may track the progress of your parcel with our online parcel tracker, etc., etc. You can change that however you want. I'm going to leave it as is. And then it's going to have the tracking number. Um, I believe you can write HTML here. So if you have an, a website, that'll also be included in the email. Save your changes. And this is one of several screens. We still have to talk about taxes and shipping. How does the store actually look and function? Maybe you do have products from another shop that you want to migrate here. We do have import, although it, I mean, it's not as magical as you might think. So we still have a lot to look at. That's why this class is three weeks long. We're going to cover all aspects of this. I'm going to wrap up the main lecture right now because what we need to do is we need to talk about let's save our work. You cannot just copy, if you still have it open, you cannot just copy this WordPress folder to your flash drive and take it with you. Then you'll be missing your database. And this whole site, WordPress, runs on a database. Remember the one we created at the beginning of the, of the class, phemyadmin. So we're going to take a moment to archive our site. To make a perfect copy of it at this point and take it with us. I'm going to archive my site, put it in the network folder, and when you come back next week you can use my site or you can use your site. But what we're going to do, and we did several times last month, we're going to go back to sheet number four in the section archiving your site. And if you're new, we're going to do this right now. We're going to make a perfect copy of our site with the duplicator plugin. Not only can it resurrect a site, it can archive a site. It makes a perfect copy. Every picture, every text, every product, the whole database, everything. So we've already got step one, we've got the plugin, we've got step two, three, number four. Let's. Oops, oh, here it is. Uh, we're here under our site. We've got a menu item at the bottom left duplicator click on packages or click on the word duplicator there's no there's no packages there's no archives we're under duplicator so we're going to select to create a new package at the top right it's going to create a, a file with the date a bunch of options that you usually don't need to deal with. And here in my instructions, the package name should list today's date and the name of your site. You may change it. I usually don't because as we make more copies of the site, it already has the date, and the date is a good way to organize it. Instead of it being called my site with some numbers, the date is a good way to organize your archives. Under notes, you can add your own note about what's in the duplicator archive, and I recommend it. It says it up here, notes. I might have a date, but I don't remember. Why did I make this backup? So if you click notes, there'll be a spot for you to write a note, and you'll see this when you resurrect the site, you'll see what's in this archive. So I'm going to write here. Uh, updated plugins. That's one of the things we did today. Changed theme installed WP e-commerce set admin 
what was it, general and admin store settings. Just to know for myself, this obviously is optional. But we use this in my company, we make notes about what's in this archive. We're not going to remember a month later, especially when we're dealing with five clients, what's this archive. Anything you want to write here, but I wrote updated plugins, change to the theme, install WP e-commerce, set general, and admin store settings. I could then write to do the rest. But whatever, you can write, um, you know, this could be an archive before we do an update, to do an update. Uh, to do continue, to set store, settings, options. That's going to remind me when I come back a week later what's next. So whatever you wrote there will work. Click next. This is going to scan your site. If there are any issues, it'll let you know, and hopefully a way to fix it. Everything about the server looks good. The archive it says itself says that the site is about 59 megabytes. Everything that the site is right now is 59 megabytes. The database is nearly one and a half megabytes. So all of that will be saved. Sometimes a warning appears here, especially on total size. If your site is getting over 250 megabytes, it gives you a warning. Because what's going to happen is your site, when this is a real site on GoDaddy or Bluehost, it, this plugin is going to get every single file of your site and compress it down to one file. And your particular provider might... Um, might have a problem in that it sees there's one little bit of software that's running and running and running. What's going on? And it may shut it down, and your archive fails. At 250 megabytes, that's when sometimes a server, like a Bluehost or GoDaddy or whatever, uh, shuts down the archive because it's too big, it's taking too long, it thinks there's a virus happening or something. So if you get that warning of file size, it'll tell you, well, these seven files are really big. And you say, oh, I remember now, I uploaded that PSD file that I shouldn't have, that Photoshop file that I didn't need to upload. Mine says good. I'm in the good range. Oh, it's 150 instead of 250. And if your individual files are larger than 3 megabytes, that might also interrupt the archive process. You don't know if this will really, really be bad until you click uh, build. But if you get a warning, usually you can proceed if you've got a warning. If you get an error, you can't. You have to fix the error. You might get invalid file names. Maybe somehow one of your file names is corrupted or has a special character that will interfere with the archive, so it'll tell you which ones, and you should fix that. And again, if you've got particularly large files, it'll tell you which ones. Database looks good. I didn't change anything here, and most of the time this will work just fine. Click Build. It'll work just fine until it doesn't, and as a matter of fact, we have one client right now that the duplicator is failing. So uh, we need to get in there and figure out what's going on with that. I think it has to do with with large server, a uh, large size on the server. So most likely we have to either remove files or contact GoDaddy and ask for more resources purchase more resources probably. Um, so when the package is complete you get two files, an installer file and a zip file. You do not ever need to unzip this zip file. The installer unzips it for you. Remember at the beginning of the day you got a copy of my work from last month, you put it into the WW folder and we went to the address, localhost slash wordpress slash installer.php that's what that installer there is it unzips it for you and it resurrects the site so what you need to do if you want to take this with you to work on it at home 
you need to click on the installer button that will give you this file and then you will also get uh, you will also need to click on the archive file and it'll give you these two files. They'll download to the desktop probably and then you need to copy them over to your flash drive. So there we go, they went to my desktop. One is a file with a really big name, .zip, and one is the installer. Usually what I do at this point is I make a folder, put today's name, today's date on it, and the site name, and put those two files in that folder and then put it on my flash drive. And then I'll put it in the network folder also if you want a copy of my site. I made a folder, I put both the zip file and the installer PHP into that. And then I'm going to drag that over to my flash drive. And now I have a perfect copy of it where I can work on it at home. Or, think of this as, uh, as our company does, we have a perfect, com a perfect copy here and now we can deploy it to the server, to GoDaddy. We can resurrect it with the same uh, process as I have here on my handout. And then I'll put this in the network folder. We're going to have some lab time until 9.30 as we usually do. I forgot to mention for new people, the class goes from 6 to 9.30, and the last 30 minutes is lab time in case people need individual help. But uh, we're going to wrap the main lecture, so any general questions on anything we talked about today? We still have a lot to do, of course, and that's why we've got two more weeks. When we come back next time, we'll resurrect the site together, and we'll keep working on our shopping cart.